Great. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today on this uh, very interesting session, uh, everyone. First of all, a huge uh, round of applause for TVF for uh, setting this up. Uh, this is always a great forum to be at and, uh, and props to them for assembling a great lineup of speakers. So for the session today, uh, the session is about premiumization in the two-wheeler sector and we will delve on what are some of the reasons for it and how the industry is going to evolve and at the same time what does that mean for various stakeholders in this ecosystem. So we have uh, a very healthy representation from uh, the value chain. Um, and on that, uh, before we delve into it, let me just state some facts about affluent India, if you will. So, um, right now, the top 4% of working age population in India has a per capita income of greater than $10,000 per annum, compared to the Indian average per capita income of about $2,100. So this is probably what we can call the affluent India. And that's about 44 million um, of us in the working population in, uh, in, in, uh, from last year which is going to be uh, going to as high as 60 million um, by uh, 2030. And in that, uh, we've seen a huge uptake, whether it's on tax filings, on bank deposits, credit cards, broadband connections. We all have seen the lines at airports, how Indians have been traveling overseas domestically, and how discretionary spends have go gone up. Uh, whether it's on gold, whether it's on leisure, and you know uh, there are companies, uh, uh, wh whether it's uh, whether it's on gold, whether it's on jewelry, we've, we've seen huge uptake from them. So that is a testament for for increasing premiumization uh, when it comes to the Indian consumer mindset. And traditionally, um, a lot of us believed that India is a very value conscious market or a very cost conscious market. So let's find out uh, how that has uh, changed. So with that, uh, maybe we can talk about what are the factors uh, we think uh, which are driving the shift towards premium two-wheelers in Indian market. And maybe we can start with you, Mr. Anand, how's, uh, how's, how's Irusha e-mobility viewing it and what do you think are some factors driving premiumization? Thank you, Mr. Harsh. It's a lot of echo here. Is this my voice audible? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, once again. And uh, thank you, Mr. Harsh. See, premiumization, if we talk about, uh, first of all, we all should understand what is driving the same. So in my opinion, this is my views that what is driving this aspect is, number one, the aspiration of the young consumer mindset, young or kind of a middle-aged mindset. Second is increase in the disposable income. Third is increase in the technological advancement, which you call it as a product features. Fourth is the style quotient. Fifth is the easy availability of loans. And the sixth is the push from the OEMs. Now I'll start in the reverse order when I say push from the OEMs because uh, currently as I speak I represent an OEM only and why OEMs push the premium products? The only and only reason is they make a lot of money in the premium products. That's a hardcore fact. You sell a competitive product, you don't make money. You say, sell a premium product, you make money. And when the entire industry is shifting towards premiumization, they look at the changes it has brought in. Initially, we used to be around, if we all remember, 60 to 70,000 kind of a two-wheeler product we used to buy. And now you see with the advancement of electric two-wheelers that have come in, the market has shifted to 1.25 to 1.5 lakh and beyond. If you look at motorcycle market in India, now I'm referring to uh, basically ICE engines. Initially, up to 100 cc market, if you look at four years back data, around 60% of the motorcycles were in the 100 cc or below or sort of 100, 110 cc kind of a, you know, segment. But now, the last year or the current year which is going on, it has dropped down to 48% market has grown, this sector has shrunk. Then we looked at the premium segment, which is 150 cc and beyond. It was earlier 12% around four years back, now it is crossing 20%. 
So this clearly shows that consumer mindset is towards that. Now coming back to my organization, Arisha E-Mobility, where we talk about a new entrant in EV field, especially which is, we started with our L5 category and now we are into two-wheeler and of course, very shortly we'll be launching a four-wheeler and buses also. Here, we had two choices, either to enter what more than 600 companies are doing, which is now entering in the low speed segment, which does not require registration, insurance, road tracks, number plate, nothing is required. You, you make good money, you import a Chinese vehicle, get an EEC approval and start selling it. It's very easy to do. You don't need even localization also, because there is no approval required. But we thought, no, let's not do that. Let us start with a product which is little premium in nature, because we don't want to make loss from day one. So that's why when we entered the segment, we entered from a premier one. What we thought us, let us give more features to the product that we are trying to sell. Even my motorcycle has little advanced features, little more of software and telematics, connectivity. If I talk about my two wheelers, that also has got advanced feature as far as the range is concerned. In a layman's term, range is concerned, the product, the traction is concerned, the gradient is concerned, the load carrying capacity is concerned. We are trying to beat that. Of course, I'm speaking on behalf of two-wheeler, but similarly on L5 also category. It was very difficult with, uh, to compete with the giants who are already sitting in L5, you know, especially the Bajaj and the Piaggios of the world and Mahindras. But then what to do? Come out with an advanced factor, which is not competing exactly with them. Try to bring in a product which is little better from them so that if a consumer asks for a relatively new brand, why it will buy a new brand? until unless the product features are good. Then what about the pricing part? If I try to enter in the pricing at a competitive segment, probably most of the consumers will not like to buy my product. So we, we entered in a little high price sector. Even the best of the competitors, we kept a price little higher than the, the best of the competition that is available in the market. And the result? Now our demand is much more than supply. So which is something very unique that we have noticed in India. So my recommendation, uh, Harshi, and to all uh, who are present, again, personal views only, try to go for a premium product. Consumer is not looking for cheaper options. It is a temporary gain that you will get by selling cheaper products, cheaper components, or cheaper, uh, what you say, the, uh, the two-wheeler or a three-wheeler or any product category. Let's not compete on the price. Let's compete on the ask characteristics of the product, the premiumness of the product the kind of value addition that we can offer to a consumer. Because end of the day, customer works on two things. One is on the style quotient, which is the products and feature, and second is the TCO, total cost of ownership. So that's what my view, sir. Thank you so much. So quite interesting, you mentioned uh, that, that it's not the, the value end of spectrum, but the value added end of the spectrum where probably a lot of moat lies. So let me just extend this to you, uh, Vimal, as well. So TVS um, has has worked a lot on developing the the motorsport ecosystem in India. And personally, for you, you've always been associated with very progressive and premium motorsport-oriented brands. Uh, but how is TVS viewing this shift towards premium two-wheelers? A lot of OEMs, uh, two-wheeler side incumbents, have have traditionally been 100, 150, sub uh, 150 cc uh, sort of markets, and that's where the volume was. And uh, and now there's, there is a deliberate shift towards everyone. Of course, that drives uh, profits, but what's the larger undercurrent at play? Probably you can help share some thoughts around it. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Hush. And uh, it's a very interesting topic. You know, I've been associated with motorcycling from almost 25 years. And um, when I visit globally, India is always seen as a smaller CC or a commuter segment market. But I always believe India is not cost conscious market, it's a value conscious market. People are ready to pay a value. If it's an iPhone, then he is ready to pay. If it's a Samsung, he's ready to pay the Samsung cost. If it's an Oppo, he's ready to pay the Oppo cost. So that's one clarity in our mind right from the beginning of our childhood we have been taught. I think in India, typically, there are three, four drivers. I'll talk about the drivers first, Hush, and then I'll link it to TVS. So one driver is, as you know, the number of billionaires in the world. India is ranked now number three, number of billionaires in the world. And I understand every year we are adding close to around 50, 40, 50 billionaires every year. Now I'm not talking about the millionaires. I'm talking about the number of billionaires, right? Uh, 
India ranks number one in terms of the number of millionaires in the world. On top of it, we are one of the youngest population uh, country, right? So aspiration level in India has gone to a next level. Uh, if you go a few years back, Hush, people would say the cost of the motorcycle is how much or the cost of the product is how much. Nowadays, it's about down payment and EMI. How much is the EMI? How much is the down payment I'll buy as long as I like the product? The third thing fundamentally is changing. Uh, in India, people would buy an upgrade within the product lineup. Uh, for first few years, they will ride 100 cc, then they earn a little bit more money, they will upgrade to 125, then they'll earn a little bit more money and upgrade to 150. Now they are not worried about it. As long as they can afford an EMI, they would directly jump into the product which they want to buy. So that is the second shift which is happening. Third, people are no more buying a product in India. Uh, whether you go to hotels, you fly the airlines, or you go to any restaurants in India, people are now more and more going to specialists rather than to journalists. So I would say premium is nothing but a specialist trade within the business. So if you want to have a dosa, you probably will go to only a place which makes the finest dosa. And if you want to have the finest burger, then you will go to Burger King or McDonald's. Definitely you are not going to go to a restaurant which will serve all kind of food and thereby you don't get a quality or uh, that premiumness to it. So I think that is the consumer behavior which is changing. Um, so people are buying into a complete world uh, of, 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 of that brand. So it's no more about product, it's about product experience, it's about the technology experience you can have, the connected world which comes with all these electronics, megatronics which is building up in the product. And it's about community building, it's no more just a product selling. Hey, you came, I gave you a product, thank you very much, come to my service and walk off. It's about connecting with customer regularly. How does he drive with his family? How does he drive with his friends? How does he meet on the weekend? How does he communicate uh, to his bike? You know, it's, it's all those things which are making this uh, segment grow. Just to add to everyone, you know, in India typically you would see a same product uh, changing only stickers and surviving for ages, okay? And uh, now you can see last year alone, in India there were 72 product launches in premium space, 72 including some product, product upgrades, refreshes. So there is a lot of variety which is adding up in India. And as my colleague here mentioned, a lot of people want to jump into premiumization is not only to make money. Of course, you have to make money if you're in business. There are smart people who make money also in commuter business. It's all about the value proposition. Uh, but when the people are shifting to premium, they're really, really shifting to quality product. They're shifting to that that he is also upgrading life because automobile gives you a bragging right. When you are on a product, it talks about where you come in from, right? You can't talk about your washing machine which is at home, which is as expensive as your car or as expensive as your bike because you can't go and brag about you. it. In premium, you can really, really not only brag about it and also consume it. So that's another shift uh, we are seeing. Coming back to TVS as a company, we have always led by design, which my colleague Anurud said, whether it is a commuter products, uh, whether it is electric products and whether it is an ice in the premium segment, uh, we have always led with technology. Uh, and whether it was the first uh, single channel ABS in India, we were the first to produce it, there was no uh, government regulation. We are the first to bring dual channel ABS to our products and the government has no regulation. By the way, we are the first company to bring motorsports to India. In fact, if you look at TVS Motor Company, it was formed in 1978. 1980, we made the first product of 50cc which clocked 105 km per hour speed in 1982. So from last 40 years, we have been racing. So we've been bringing motorsports into the forefront. In a way, our principles of the company are, uh, India is a democratic country, and previously racing was associated with rich people, people who could afford. Uh, in a way, we have democratized racing. When we have democratized racing, that means performance-oriented products have become large and people can consume them. So we also democratized uh, premium to a large extent. And now in India, if I look at the India specific industry, almost 16% is becoming premium and super premium, where the product costs roughly around one and a half lakhs and go up right up to 20 odd lakhs. So I think India is moving faster on the premium uh, segmentation. People are looking for experience, experience and experience. It's not only just a product. I think most of the brands make a mistake by saying I'm making a premium product deal sell. I think it's just not product, it's all about uh, the product experience, uh, it's about the brand experience, it's about the technology experience which a consumer can 
uh, consume. And I think we are leading in terms of technology, in terms of building community, and in terms of bringing technology in terms of safety. Thanks, Ash. Thank you so much. So, community, experience, technology, I think that's, uh, th that's the triad you spoke about. We'll circle back more about it and, and how, how uh, TVS is sort of differentiating product spaces that. Uh, but uh, before that, uh, let me go to Nitin. So, Nitin, uh, we had a chat before the session today and you were kind enough to show me um, the display you have of Polyplastics Industries. For the audience, uh, maybe you can talk a little about polyplastics and and because uh, you are also heavily investing in premiumization as a trend, probably you can talk a little bit about how do you f view premiumization and therefore how is polyplastics deploying some of its efforts towards premiumization development. Thank you, Harsh. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's nice uh, to see all of you and sitting uh, with my customers. So, uh, when we see pre premium, premium uh, market is shifting towards premium. That's what uh, my uh, esteemed colleagues also mentioned. And uh, uh, this, this uh, puts a lot of responsibilities on us. Because we are making the products which tell you that it is premium. We make uh, emblems, we make uh, uh, garnishes which gives premium look, uh, beautifying to the vehicle. We are into the business for about 5, 40 years now and uh, we are making lot of uh, components related to plated over plastics and uh, plating. Uh, these components obviously going into all the segments but when it comes to the premium, our product requirement or the uh, uh, significance becomes more because uh, if product is a premium, it needs to tell that I am premium. Now coming to the uh, technologies, we are, we are uh, working on a lot of uh, new technologies to keep, uh, to keep the pace up with market. When it goes to premium, it goes high cost. When it comes to the customer, he needs everything on a lower cost. So, uh, keeping the cost optimized, we are working on later to latest technologies, we are working on film-based technologies. Earlier everything was chrome, everywhere it was chrome. Chrome is too costly. Now, people are looking forward to the different technologies in, uh, in the uh, same segment and uh, we are working on uh, those technologies. We are working on film-based uh, manufacturing technologies. We have plants across India. We are supplying all the OEMs, domestic and uh, export. And uh, two-wheeler is a market which is expanding uh, in a big way. And uh, we are also associated with the two-wheeler market with a big way. We, we, are, uh, we are supplying all the uh, premium segment as well as budget segment. And we are also looking uh, that the premium segment is moving towards the next level. Coming to the, uh, uh, our next targets, our target is to make the product affordable because uh, when my product is affordable, obviously their two-wheeler will become affordable. So that's how we are working and uh, we are investing a lot in uh, new technologies. Uh, very soon you will see a very big market shift from Chrome to the different uh, plated and uh, different color of uh, uh, products. So, uh, limited editions are coming. We are working on limited editions like you, uh, you might have seen the Honda Motorcycle Gold Edition. Uh, we developed that product for them to look at uh, uh, beautiful. We developed dark chrome segment where you have, might have seen uh, dark Activa. So, that also is our product we have developed. So that's how we are uh, trying to uh, support the market and uh, thank you, thank you very much uh, Harsh giving me this opportunity to explain this. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much and probably we'll talk about how do you differentiate premium later once we do another round. Um, and with that let me go to Ajay. So. Uh, Ajay, Piaggio took a bet about Indian premiumization much before any of uh, the other incumbents had it figured. 
and uh, right from Audrey Hepburn's time to today with Justin Bieber edition and whatnot, there's been a through and through premiumization, whether we talk about Vespa, whether we talk about Aprilia, whether we talk about Moto Guzzi. I think those are iconic brands and always have been premium or classic at the same time, high uh, durability, global design um, language sort of uh, ethos. Uh, how do you view uh, this shift towards premiumization? This is not something which is new for, for Piaggio, uh, but in, in how do you guys view it and, uh, and why do you think everyone should continue to take a bet on premiumization? Thank you. A uh, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much, uh, TWF. Fantastic effort, I think. It's good to meet and interact with auto giants and auto experts and auto friends. My friends sitting here, Sumbli, I mean, we've been talking on LinkedIn, but good to in interact like this and many other friends like Vinkesh and all. Uh, very apt question. First of all, I think we should understand what is premium. Uh, customer d is very demanding. Uh, everybody said, and I was very happy hearing Kaushik Madhavan very rightly put, especially after COVID, what is happening in India. First of all, we are global citizens, rightly said by all the panelists here. We are purely global citizens, very well connected with the world and technology and education in India is one of the best in the world. We all know that. So we are fully aware. Awareness is number one, customers are aware. Very rightly said by you, Kaushik, yes, five years, six years, seven years back, most of the one, because I'm coming from car industry, two wheelers, and car industry, two wheelers. So everybody would talk about TCO. Kitna deti hai, kitna chalti hai, kaise hoga, how will I maintain it? Now things have really changed. We've seen people are paying 1,40,000 cards swiping for uh, iPhones. Similar price like electric, uh, electric two wheelers. Similar price like Vespa today, for example. This is not a, India still is a middle class economy, that is not a small amount, but people are ready. Why they are ready? They want better. They want everything good. They want to feel that feeling should be good. They want to look good, good in the society, best in the society, best design, best global design, best performance, everything. Of course, Indians are very demanding because we are still a middle class economy. But once you convince them, they're ready to pay. So this is what is happening, very aptly said by you, Kaushik, the TVO, the if the value proposition with the affordability price matches in the mindset of the customer, he immediately pays you. Examples are phones. We know that how this thing, the industry is moving. When the um, uh, iPhone opened an outlet in Delhi and Gurgaon, I saw people were outside like half a kilometer line in Mumbai. <laughs> this is what is happening. People, from where these customers come? Are we still middle class economy? So I think things have really changed, especially after COVID. Aspirations have changed. Lifestyles have changed. Disposable incomes are changing. Finance options have changed. We have become more of a society which is more, let's enjoy today. So I think everybody wants to enjoy the better premium. So back to your question regarding the uh, Piaggio. Yes, Vespa, one of the, uh, I mean, scooter brands in India and globally that everybody knows how this was born as a, as a scooter, as a, uh, as, a, as a brand. And then Aprilia is a, a hardcore sporting uh, motorcycle experience, Moto Guzzi and all. So yes, while Vespa, is as a product definitely, and Esprilia is a product definitely, uh, is clear that we have to give the same global experience to our Indian customers. But I think the bigger challenge is the customer, because it doesn't end with the product premiumness. It starts with the dealerships, for example. Each touch point at the dealership when the customer walks in should be feeling of premium. I cannot sell an iPhone from a very shanty, uh, shabby shop, no. It has to be some experience center, it has to be some, some sort of customer uh, launch, for example. So it doesn't end here. While we promise the good products, again, it's very uh, uh, challenging for us in Indian environment to create that kind of global experience to our Indian customers, whether, as I said, through the touch points of walking into the showrooms, passing through the showroom experience, the training and education of our sales teams, then entering into the workshop. The most important thing, again, today we discussed in EV is going to be a big challenge how this after sales market is going to be, which is very strong in ICE market especially in two-wheelers and car industry. So here, again, it's a challenge for all uh, our dealers to maintain that kind of after-sales experience. Then becomes the complete cycle of a premiumness. Otherwise, I can make a motorcycle worth, say, X lakh rupees. What will happen if a dealer is unable to sell and convince my customer who is very well aware? He will be having a very branding, bad brand experience. So as a complete cycle, we all are responsible. It is not the production, not the product complete cycle till the end, till the customer owns the vehicle, five years, six years, seven years, or even if it resold, again, the brand will be remembered only Piaggio. 
So this is the um, uh, this is the promise what we have, uh, which is global, and that's what, to my understanding, the premium nest should be, to be better, to be better TCO rather than TCO TVO, total value proposition. That's going to be a real premium nest uh, in future. Thank you. Very interesting concept of total value proposition, and I think across the customer lifetime value, this has to be embedded, and it it cannot be just only at acquisition time and uh, it has to be embedded all across the ownership. And in fact, I remember uh, all of us in our business schools would have probably studied about the Starbucks case study, how in 1980s when Howard Schultz was setting this up, uh, the idea was to have a third place which is neither your home or nor your uh, office, but a third place where, uh, where it's the same coffee what one could get anywhere but you pay for the experience. So I think probably, uh, you know, uh, as, as Indians move up the ladder, these nuances come and play. And that brings us to the next question about what defines premium? When does a product become premium? So we've seen, um, this is in common parlance, we always, everyone has sort of a premium value up, special version, etc. But at the same time, uh, to be true premium, there, there must be some qualifier, uh, you know, uh, criteria. Uh, and I'm sure all of us are driving that premium mess, whether it's on product or services or the whole peripherals. So probably, Mr. Anand, you could take us through uh, Irisha. I saw that your firm has multiple form factors, some of them on commercial side, but also on the consumer side. H how, as per you, is the differentiator for premier offerings, uh, whether it's design, features, performance, how, how do you guys view it? Thank you. Uh, Good point. Uh, as far as uh, what I feel is that uh, the key differentiator is, of course, design is one of the factors. And uh, it, to my mindset, what consumer who comes in, he is looking at some kind of a product features. So what is the feature that we are offering? I mean, some people call it as an experience, but I call it as a features because experience comes from the features of the product. Just by saying my product is giving you a world-class experience or a something significant experience does not add any value. So now, as our friend said that he's working on the auto components, how to bring in the differentiation. When uh, in the ICE technology, because I had worked in ICE also, so in the ICE technology, when we moved from BS4 to BS6, we could see that performance was the biggest you know, indicator towards premiumization, including the pollution redu reduction. So in the EV segment, if we talk about, or in other segments we talk about, the key features, one, the uh, kind of sturdiness of the body, the kind of value additions that we bring in the body. So for example, I'll quote an example. I mean, this example comes from my ex-company. I will just take the name of that company. I was working as a CEO of Revolt Motors, the first motorcycle company of, uh, EV motorcycle company of India, and quite successful. And uh, what we thought, what could bring in the premium -ness, premiumness in that product? So we introduced a sound box, and we charged consumer extra for that, and consumer was willing to pay. In the EV, the two-wheeler does not make any noise. There is no feeling. But in motorcycle, consumers are looking at that feeling that that noise should come. You know, when you start a TVS bike, to the, or, a, or a Bajaj, or a Honda, that noise comes. That gives you an adrenaline rush. So that was a small aspect. Then we keep on adding softwares. So what software is actually relevant to the consumer? Is it his driving habits? Is it the road that he wants to navigate through? Or is it telling him that yes, you drive at such a such speed and you get maximum range or mileage out of the same. Then we brought in some new concept of the seat design. You know, you can keep on adding, uh, Mr. Harsh, the, the value additions, the features and all those things. Then we also went, uh, uh, now currently my product has got probably the highest battery in the segment. When you talk about 3.5, 3.6 kilowatt kind of a battery in a segment and when you talk about the motor which is giving you a peak output of 6 kilowatt, then you are thinking about, yes, you are caring for a customer. You are not caring just for yourself because customer needs a pickup because end of the day, he or she would like to match the ICE performance also. Because he would say that, yes, I am going for EV, but what is their betterment as far as my product is concerned vis-a-vis -vis the ICE uh, products. It's not just that he is saving on fuels. It started from fuel. Of course, that's the biggest drive. Even the government is driving the same thing. But ultimately, it moved on to the value additions, what EV can bring on the table. 
So to me, the complete overhauling of the product, not just you know what a few of the uh, organizations are doing, like you rightly mentioned, uh, upgrading the version. Okay, that is also required, but bring in some significant features which are visible to the consumers. If it is visible, we all, I mean, uh, probably most of us understand Hindi. Wo kehte hai na, jo dikhta hai, wo dikhta hai. So end of the day, uh, many of us said we are not sitting here for charity business. We are sitting here to do the business. But back of the mind, consumer is the topmost priority for us. When consumer is topmost priority for us, then we have to take care of his needs, his aspirations, his requirements, along with our goals, which is to make a sustainable product, which gives us profit also. Because we are running an organization, we are feeding at least 1,000 people. So that's what my thought process is. Sure, thank you. And yeah, interesting anecdote on, on Revolt, you mentioned about the sound box. Uh, brings me to uh, some memories for me as well. So I was the brand manager for Prius, uh, Toyota Prius, and back in the day, this was exactly a, a new problem where, uh, because it was a CBU, uh, it was at that price point, and then consumers asked that, you know, it doesn't make noise, so how do I announce I'm, I'm coming in this uh, sophisticated yet expensive product? So yeah, I think it is quite unique uh, on that front. Uh, coming to you, uh, um, Vimal, we, uh, we spoke about premiumization, and then, um, of course, uh, Apache's done some phenomenal work there. Uh, could you help us understand a little bit about how does TVS uh, dial up uh, its effort uh, or, uh, on premiumization, and, and what happens when you, when you go premium? What changes as a consumer? Uh, thanks, Harsh. I, I think it's a very interesting topic and very close to me because I want to see India in the, in the global map of being the premium market of the world because I think we are there. We are the number one two-wheeler makers in the world and we should become number one premier uh, motorcycle maker or two-wheeler maker in the world. That's my dream and, and I wish we are in the right direction. Just to answer your question, Harsh, uh, apart from design which differentiates a product, of course the CC which then defines the premium. So typically in India, we say 150 CC plus is sports premium and maybe 250 above super premium. But when you go to Europe, anything below 750 is commuter, okay? When you go to America, anything below 750 is commuter. So definition of premium and, uh, and premiumization changes across the globe. Let's take an Indian scenario, with, which is 150 CC plus. Of course, one of the differentiator is design for sure, because people would like to see a very differentiated proposition on their products. Of course, style, which we mentioned, the colleagues on left and right, they said, the one which is visually impactful. But I think in premium, one more thing which goes beyond what you can see with the naked eye is also the experience part of the technology. Because you cannot, suppose I tell somebody, how is ABS? Unless he experiences ABS, he is not going to talk about ABS. How is the color of the bike? Yes, beautiful, because he can see through the naked eye. So. Premiumization is not only design, not only CC, not only power, not only pickup. It's a whole world around it. Coming back to TVS, you know, we recently launched a product called as RTR310. It's one of the beautiful uh, naked sports motorcycle we launched in India. One side, uh, we bought the performance of the engine to the highest power to weight ratio, uh, higher in terms of the features which we gave. In fact, we were the first to provide hot and cold seat on our motorcycle. It's the world's first motorcycle with hot and cold seat and you know we always had hot seats for Europe and all but in India temperature shoots up so much you know how hard it is to sit on a seat in Delhi during June July you probably will feel like you're sitting on a frying pan when you put your bums on the on the bike so we bought in the hot and cold seat along with this we also developed a technology called as RTDSE with Bosch uh, one side we bought a huge level of performance other side we wanted to bring the safety norm because this consumer not only wants a high performance, uh, he also wants to be equally safe and equally comfortable to experience that power, that experience. So we bought this technology, you know, I must tell you that Harsh is a six directional IMU, which you typically find in the car. We bought in the motorcycle, which can absolutely help you to corner traction control. When you're doing a cornering on a bike, you typically try to lean and this traction control brings you back, reduces your speed and makes your cornering become much better. So we have taken on one side performance and another side safety to the extreme next level 
uh, in terms of the premium segment, thereby the consumer, whatever we are given, he is able to experience on the real road condition. Otherwise, you may have a huge power, huge torque, beautiful design machine, but if it doesn't break properly, if it doesn't stop properly, if it doesn't corner properly, the customer is not going to buy you. So that is the shift we have done. Uh, apart from the shift to what we have done is build up this community around the riders uh, through which we drive two, three large parameters. One, through this we drive ride safely and responsibly because that is one of the important parameters for us as a company, as a brand because a lot of road accidents happen because of two-wheeler. So we develop this community through which we ensure people ride with proper riding gears, helmets, they know how to be responsible on the road. Everybody knows how to ride a bike, but I think we lack the responsibility, ownership of being on the road and being safe for others. So that is one part. Second is we also drive the, the actions in terms of development in the rural belts. We try to do a lot of social activities through this. And the third is to drive the overall experience. That's how Apache is now 5 million strong brand in India. So that's, that's how we differentiate, not only on product, but on experience side. Sure. Hello. Yeah, that's, that's quite interesting. You mentioned that it, 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 it has to still uh, conduct the duties of what is expected from a product. And then the, the core values have to be true first. And that's where a lot of differentiation uh, happens. So extending that to you, uh, Nitin. So premiumization, um, Differential would mean a higher bomb cost for, for customers. I'm not sure if you are getting those, those kind of uh, cost contracts. Um, of course, when you, when you commit to a better, uh, b better form factor, the, the, the manufacturing processes change, the raw material cost changes. Uh, and of course, it will have a better payoff in terms of yields or uh, profit pool for you. But how does, uh, how do you view premiumization and what do you different when it comes to premium products? Uh, is, is there a different manufacturing process and uh, do you see this to continue? Do you see customers ready to pay for such kind of uh, differentiation? Thank you, Arsh. Uh, nice question. See, uh, cost is uh, obviously an important factor, of course, uh, and rightly said by everybody, uh, we are doing business and business is not for only for charity. At the business, obviously, cost is an important factor, but we are working towards the overall sustainability. We are working on uh, environmental uh, sustainability. All our plants, we have maintained it uh, zero discharge. We, our chrome are getting chrome free. We are making uh, paint free processes so that uh, the environment also getting supported. Uh, we are going towards premium. Uh, that doesn't mean everything, uh, every cost should be given to customer or to the end, end uh, user. Uh, we are working on the low cost technologies, make it premium, but at a low cost. So uh, it's the overall sustainable process we are working on. Technologies are evolving, uh, new technologies to, to support the cost reductions and as well as uh, market sustainability, environmental sustainability and business sustainability all put together. So, uh, we are trying to uh, maintain a win-win situation for everybody, for customers as well as for us. So, that's how we are working right now. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, moving to you, Ajay. So. So, on, uh, so you spoke about uh, Vespa uh, and, and in fact the entire Piaggio portfolio, uh, you know, committing to premiumization. Uh, so uh, when it comes to form factor, of course, there's superior uh, raw material which is deployed um, and also at the same time uh, on the ownership experience, it of course increases uh, uh, the, the effort to, uh, to, to sort of survive because it's a very... Uh, very thin uh, sort of market, but how do you see uh, how do you see creating differentiation on premium offerings and and how's how's Piaggio doing it? 
Sorry, your voice is echoing. How do you see the differentiation? Yeah, how, how are you guys creating differentiation at that Piaggio site? Ah, okay. So I think it is not only for Piaggio since we are talking uh, premium. So uh, differentiation is a premium is a topic, right? Differentiation on two wheeler definitely. So again, to back to my same what I repeated, look, feel, and experience will decide what the premiumness is. You know. The look means, for example, if I'm looking at this bottle, as a customer, I have a full right to look it through my eyes. It should look the best to me, the best to me. Then I'm ready to pay for it. When I'm going to feel this, then it should give me the best experience, what I'm looking at globally. And then I, when I own it, and it should be till five years, six years, in case of bike, it should be the best experience. So when it comes to this kind of differentiation, each manufacturer, I think, is trying to give the best designs. Nowadays, you see the electric vehicles in the last four years, what has happened? 1 lakh 30,000, 1 lakh 40,000. We often talk, if you compare EVs uh, to scooters to our uh, normal ICE engines, kind of features they're offering, kind of technology they're offering, maintenance free, why customers are shifting towards that. You know, so this differentiation means, first of all, it is not the cost. Cost nowadays coming a second step, but if I'm convinced that this technology which is different to me, in terms of my design, in terms of my looks, in terms of my experience, I'm convinced four years I can own it, then comes my total value ownership. So this kind of differentiation, each and every manufacturer will have to do it, which we have seen a classic example of EV industry's evolution in India. Like pre-COVID days, hardly any numbers, and today the contribution is close to 5% in the entire two-wheeler of 50 and a half million. That's the kind of amount of EVs have grown. So this is a clear technological uh, revolution which has happened. Why happened? Because customers are there. And as I said in the beginning, they are not commuters segment price. They are more than 1 lakh 20, 1 lakh 30. Of course, they were supported by government because of fame subsidies, fine. But despite of that till date, we are still having an average price of 120, 130, 140, which is much higher than the commuter price of 80,000, 90,000 entry level bikes uh, or scooters in India. So this is going to be a changing uh, way. So differentiation has to be clearly felt in terms of uh, technology, designs, features, then comes the price. This, my, that's my take. Sure. Thank you. So uh, to sort of summarize, I think Indian premiumization story is continuing quite strong. We foresee the, the at least on the motorcycling market, uh, the industry to reach about 2 million units by 2030 from what it is today about 1 million. So I think on scooter side also we've seen uh, the average selling price go up. We have Ola, Aether, all of them uh, upping their ante. And again on the ICE side, whether it's Keyway uh, and many other players and, and Vespa of course leading the charge there. I think everyone's done um, the right investments on premiumization. This trend will continue. We might see some consolidation there because it's difficult to keep that edge. Um, there's a high cost of doing business there with premiumization and like uh, many panelists mentioned, the, you have to own the customer experience across the journey. It's just not about making a great showroom or doing, doing a great delivery, but across all touch points, how do you creep that arbitrage on right till resale and then end of term and renewal probably. Um, so I think that's, that's uh, probably going to mean better payoffs for anyone who's investing on the premiumization theme. And hopefully uh, with Amrit Kal, um, India will sort of continue to ride that premiumization wave. So with that, uh, thank you so much for sharing your valuable inputs. Maybe we can take one or two audience questions. I think there's a hand. Um, maybe someone can pass on a mic to the gentleman. Hi, good afternoon. This is Jaggi. And uh, while the esteemed panel is very right on the CMF, the features, functionality, style, stance of the vehicle, how we built in the format of the vehicle, and the customer experience is what Vimalji also mentioned and Ajayji also mentioned. What I'd like to table out here is what are your views, and including the earlier panelists as well, um, on have we reached or we are missing the bus on premiumization is not a summation of features, but yes, owning the customer, as Harsh also mentioned, on experience. Uh, where are we on mass customization? Because that's the key to premiumization. And I'm saying this because of my 25-year experience on customization. I feel it's somewhere lost. I'd like to you your views, Vimal and Ajay especially. Would you 
would someone like to take that? Mass customization and how... Um, so let me quickly product. add, yes, uh, uh, um, he's, he's going to add something. So first of all, let's understand what we said about premium. Even a computer segment customer also wants premium experience, premium product. He's, he's not saying I'm paying you 90,000 for this bike because uh, I'm not a rich customer, no. He all, premium definition means the best to me, the best to me as an individual. It can be, as I said, design, it can be experience. And most importantly, the respect and treatment by the dealers, again, going to be very important. If I'm buying a four lakh worth bike, as I said, and my experience is very bad at dealership or in the workshop, what my brand image would be? what my uh, entire perception of the brand. So it's a complete cycle which we have to pass through and whether it's a, a commuter segment or whether it's a premium, uh, the, the, any premium, it has to be clearly demarcated in terms of the complete package starting from product to the life cycle uh, experience. That's fine which is happening right now but don't you think to create a differentiator therein as well as uniqueness, we need to have mass customization in place because all customers would be satisfied with that and that's in where you hold the customer on a longer journey. Because every OEM is going to give you features, every OEM is going to give you technology. All of us sitting out here will be giving technology. But to create that magic differentiation on experience, why don't we build in mass customization? So, Ma, before I think other panelists, I'll just take 10 seconds to answer. You are absolutely correct. Look, the most important auto industry is 85% is product. 15% is the effort by network, service, sales, warranty and the price last, which ownership cost. If 85% something goes wrong, I can sell it for six months. After seven months, You'll word of mouth is going to be so You'll negative, fall flat. it's Perfectly going to be right. off. Perfect. So this is clear differentiation. The product has to be top quality. Quality means, of course, quality, ownership experience, and the lifelong experience. Spare part cost. It's a complete ownership. That has to be perfect. Otherwise, you know, everything can go. Uh, your premium image can go completely for a neg negative image. Maybe. Sure. Vimal, your views. Yeah, I think... Um, you definitely are from automobile and you have spent a lot of time in automobile, so there where the question is very valid. So let me try to answer it in two steps. And I relate with you on motorsport. Sorry? I relate with you on motorsport from where I come. Okay, so yeah. yes, customization is the core. Absolutely. So let me answer it from two perspectives. Now, first I will answer it from the perspective of customization of the products. So one is definitely every OEM will try to have product differentiation, design, specs. No, over a period of time it is a catch-up game. Either the first manufacturer takes a lead, the second manufacturer follows it. But what is happening, let me give an example at TVS. Now, we have almost 15% of our Apache, RTR and RR, which is BTO, built to order. This is a completely built to order motorcycle for him, which he can customize in terms of his specs, in terms of his color, in terms of his choice, what he right. wants to add. It is not something which is served on a standard product. Though that standard product is also the best, but he is choosing it a online and making yes. to the next step. Perfect. So this is one part that is about differentiation and customization. The second part is customization is a is a reflection of uh, you know personalization only because everybody wants to look different. Whether you wear a and jeans it's or a it's jacket, it's like flaunting your attitude. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So that is second. In terms of India, customization is not taking a large leap because we are guided by the homologation process to a larger extent here. So that is one part because you cannot do, say for example today you can change the sound. While my colleague said noise, I would it's call sound. it sound because sound. that is the yes. beat of the engine. Yes. Okay. Right. So in one set, lot of customization in India is not possible because of, because of the ARI CMBRs. homologation. Yes. Which in a way is right because we want the motorcycles to be safe also post Customization. That is why factory customs is taking a lead. So if you go to the largest manufacturers in world, like Porsche, like Jaguar, Land Rover, they already like have Ducat, it. They do customization. So that is picking up in India. You can see brands like TVS and also some other brands which are doing factory customization. This is from the product side. A customization is also happening from the consumer side. So previously, you would say for a premium customer, I will give a lounge, I will give an air conditioned uh, showroom, I will ensure the best technician is on it. But today what is happening, premium is becoming a benchmark and it is pulling everything up slowly. Not in terms of the consumer experience only at the top, but even commuter. That is the second leg of customization which is happening and that is what will bring the large set of change in terms of the consumer behavior and consumer experience at the dealers. I hope I have tried to answer these Super, questions. super. Thank, Thank you. you. If I may just add to that, so I yeah. think Jaggi, a lot of it, what we are seeing from our client side is the 
is the technology customization. So today, as you know, the TFT screen allows you to customize pretty much a lot of, whether it's ambient lighting, whether it's the NVH, uh, music, uh, UI, UX. So a lot of investments OEMs are making towards how do you customize the, True. it's almost like a mobile phone. True. So I think a lot of efforts going there also on the suspension. No, in uh, all the parameters and, and aggregates, I think it's side. a pure differentiator to reach there and win right. over the customer, right, which we right. should work on as an OEM. But sure. Vimal rightly mentioned the CMVR regulations need to get a little more friendly towards having mass customization. All Thanks. Right. I was speaking to one of the powertrain companies, I mean, of course, I'm not going to name them, was I was talking to them that give me a predictive maintenance now. You know, EV does not require a huge kind of a maintenance as far as the normal running is concerned, until unless it's an accidental case or God forbid, something wrong goes. So, but after six months or one year, you need an overhauling or you need some kind of a software updation or some kind of your, your products are not performing up to the optimum level. So we went for a predictive maintenance. So now uh, the, the auto component makers or the, uh, there are so many auto component makers who are sitting here, or the powertrain makers, they are now working on a, how to provide a solution to this. So that I should get an alarm in my speedometer that yes, my brakes are not working properly now, or my tire has worn out. You know, with, it's not only the question of adding sensors, but how this entire powertrain can tell me. So that's another value addition I can do. Now, uh, we also saw in the presentation before us that, uh, I think you were only giving, right, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So, it was in the, uh, very interesting, uh, my compliments to you before Thank that. You. So, uh, you look at the chassis or the other components that you manufacture. So, in the recent past, couple of years back, uh, there is a company, I will not name that company, they made a loss this year of more than 2,000 crores in EV two-wheeler only. So, their chassis was going into two pieces. Can you imagine? The vehicle is going, it came back. That chases went into two pieces. So how you prevent that, how you go to a standard supplier who, who passes all the tests as you know, laid down by ARAI or ICAT or whatever the testing body is. So that is also very useful. Then you go to the battery part. Now, uh, I'm sure you are not into battery, so this answer might not interest you. But you look at the battery, how you layer the cells and what kind of cells you are using. Is it 26500? Is it prismatic? Is it cylindrical? You know, what kind of cells and what kind of BMS you are using? How it can enhance the range of my vehicle or how it can give me more number of cycles? We were only talking about LFV batteries so far, but now people are talking about NMC batteries. And just to share with all of you, now we are talking about zinc air batteries. Many of us might not have heard even about that. So there are so many value additions it can be done. Now, with the paucity of time, uh, maybe we can address your second question in person or maybe if somebody would like to add anything to this. Because we have paucity of time, my coordinator is telling me, keep quiet. Right. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, you. And uh, so the, the, the panelists are going to be here around, uh, maybe you can catch up during uh, networking breaks sure, or sure. during lunch. So once again, uh, thank you so much uh, for everyone for sharing your well-nuanced insights. And hopefully the audience uh, got a new perspective about uh, premiumization and two videos. Thank you again, everyone, for being a patient listener. Thank you.